Utility stitches are the stitches that you're going to use every single day. So stitches like your straight stitch, which you can adjust in length, um, stitches like your zigzag stitch, which you can move the stitches closer together so you get a satin stitch, stitches for tacking, stitches for stretch fabric. And as we come down here, you'll see that we've got these stitches, which are for blind hemming. You'll need to change your foot for blind hemming and blind hemming for stretch fabric. You've got stitches that you can mend with, stitches to over edge your fabric to help to stop it fraying. Again, we've got an over edge foot. I'll show you that in just a second. And one of the really special stitches that I love is this large tacking stitch down the bottom. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But to start with, let's start right at the very basic, right at the beginning, and take a look at the straight stitch. When you turn your machine on, it will automatically set to a straight stitch. And the stitch length is three, and the needle will be right in the center. So I'm just putting the thread to the back, put the foot down, put my foot in the foot pedal and start to sew. Really simple. Now as you're sewing, you can, if you want to, stop with the needle up. That automatically happens again when you first switch the machine on. Or you can press the down needle button. And then as you start to sew and you stop, the needle will stop in the down position. So if you're pivoting, so if you're going around a corner, that leaves the needle in place so you can simply turn it and your stitch line carries on in the same direction. To choose any of the stitches, simply scroll up the program buttons to the number that you wanted to. So if I wanted to choose, for instance, a zigzag stitch, I'm going to go up to stitch number seven. And there's the zigzag stitch, as it's been set on the machine, which is um, two in length and five in width, and that's in millimetres. So if I wanted to shorten that zigzag stitch, or make it into a satin stitch by having the stitches very, very close together, all I need to do then is to press the key buttons on the top. Always have a practice on a scrap piece of fabric, first of all, just to make sure that your stitches look as you want them to look before you commit to your project. But now you can see, to speed up a little bit, that those zigzag stitches are really, really close together. So that could be for a decorative effect, or this could be to edge your fabric so that it doesn't fray. Talking of which, let's have a look at the over edge stitch. Now for the over edge stitch, you have an over edge foot. This one has a bar in the center that helps to keep the edge of the fabric flat. And it also has this little, looks like um, an ice skating blade on the side. It's not actually a blade, it's a guide. So as the edge of your fabric goes up against that guide, it tucks in any loose ends and helps the needle to go over the edge of your fabric. So it's a little bit like an alternative to having um, an overlocker or a serger. But of course, you're not trimming the fabric away here. So just like before, take your thread to the back. I'm going to choose stitch number 30. And again, practice first of all. So put your fabric right up to the edge here, foot down, and away you go. Now remember, you don't have to use the foot pedal on this machine if you prefer not to. You have your start-stop button on the front of the machine and you've got a speed control as well. If I use the speed control at the same time that I'm using my foot, it will slow the machine down, even though my foot is still down to the floor. Let's put that out the back a little bit. Okay. And as you can see with this stitch, oh, just caught inside there. It goes right around the edge of your fabric, so you get a lovely, neat finish to your look that helps to stop it fraying, but it gives you a professional finish as well. So if you're making something to sell, or if you're dressmaking, or it could be on the inside of cushion covers, anywhere where you may see that raw edge of the seam, then that's going to cover it over and give you that really nice finish. 
This is a really useful stitch that you don't see on very many sewing machines and it's a tacking stitch so it looks a little bit crazy here but basically you can make that stitch as long as you want to and go in any direction that you want to as well. So this is a perfect stitch if you want to tack or baste across the bottom of curtains so you've got bigger pieces that normally you'd be doing that by hand um, or if you're quilting. So if you need to hold together all of your layers of quilting so you've got your padding, your top fabric, your bottom fabric and you don't want to be pinning or or, or tacking or basting by hand, this is absolutely perfect for you. You'll love this stitch. So what you're going to need to do is to put your darning plate over the feed teeth because we don't want those to move. So that's just that little white plastic thing that you're going to get in your kit. You're going to need your free motion embroidery foot, which is this one. And for this, I've taken off the standard foot that was on the machine but I'm also taking off the ankle, which is this bit that holds the snap-on feet on, because this isn't a snap-on foot. So let's put that to one side, don't lose it. And then this foot simply hooks around the screw. Oops, just undo that a little bit more. So that just clips on and screw it back up again. And on the other side here, there's a bar that needs to sit on top of the clamp that holds the needle in place. And that's what helps the foot to bounce up and down. So this is the same foot that you're going to use for free motion embroidery or free machine embroidery. That's a different video. This time we're just going to use it for tacking. So it's stitch number four. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to take my two pieces of fabric, put the foot down, and then when you put your foot on the presser foot, it'll stitch one stitch. So my foot's still down, but it's only stitched the one stitch. Then you can move your fabric across and another stitch and across again and another and another as long as you like in any direction that you like so you can see how quickly you're going to be able to cover the whole of a quilt or the whole of a large piece of fabric with those tacking or basting stitches. And then to remove the stitches, that's really easy as well. If I just turn the fabric over, take the bottom thread and pull then the whole thing just comes away and your stitches just fall away from the top. 